have is just um, the shape of the clay once it's been wedged. And so uh, the shape it, that it is right now is a lot more uh, suited to a taller, narrower piece. And so what I do before throwing a plate is that I'll get that into a shape that's closer, uh, closer to a plate. And that'll make my centering job a little bit easier. So just a little bit lower, wider. And if at all possible, it's nice to have softer clay for throwing plates because you don't need to have that extra structure from a firmer clay body for, for a tall, narrow piece. You can really get away with some pretty soft clay. The only side note to that is that if you are making a plate that's really gonna be hanging out quite a bit, um, there is that middle ground of having clay that's firm enough to support that, um, but soft enough to really make the throwing easier. So when I'm getting this clay to be more flat, you know, into this plate form, one of the problems that I would always run into is that this clay wants to kind of overlap and trap water under the edge. And, you know, that, that can be a real problem. So it's, it's kind of this idea of the back and forth of making that outer edge beveled in like that and then coming back and taking that clay lower and out and you know having this sponge in my right hand is really helpful um, for just keeping things damp and sliding along. I know plates without a sponge in my hand I, I really have a tough time keeping keeping the clay damp enough to make a plate. And so it's at this point that I'm starting to think about the function of this piece and as an eating surface, I really want it to be inviting and you know a surface that's functional as well. And so I'm thinking about the curve. I like to have a curve that um, really gradually sweeps upward. And then um, here in a bit, you'll see how there's that transition from the more flat surface of the plate that is the functional part to the more decorative uh, raised up rim. But that also, you know, serves as um, a functional aspect so that you can slide food across and have that little raised area to kind of scoot food onto the, to the utensil, the fork or spoon. And just like most of my other forms, you know, compression is going to be a really major element to keeping this, this piece from cracking as it dries, you know, plates can really kind of be notorious for, for getting the cracks, especially when you're working with porcelain. And so the more that I can compress this just by really putting a lot of pressure, and it's almost like I'm throwing at this point, you know, I'm moving that clay along and compressing it in and then counteracting that with some motion um, from the center of the piece outward. And, you know, at the same time as I'm compressing, I'm actually um, doing the fine tuning on the shaping of this surface here. And so while I have this nice and flat how I want it, um, you know, this will be the time for me to go in and first kind of take away a lot of that information that reads as, you know, my hands on the clay there, um, but also continuing to shape. So continuing to shape the eating surface of this plate. And I really spend a whole lot of time, you know, with the finer little details, whether it's, you know, the exterior of a pot that's going to get carved, um, you know, or, or just even this interior spot that really will just get one solid glaze on it. You know, it's a, every, every single surface of the pot needs to be read with the thought in mind that there was some intention behind it.